Hey guys, hi. Welcome back to my channel. It's me, Stephen. It is about 3.15, 3.20 in the afternoon on February 7th, and I'm feeling very frustrated, mad, sad, irritable, disappointed, betrayed. I think betrayed is a kind of a big word, but I'm kind of feeling betrayed. Uh, I'm upset, as you can probably hear. Um, why? Because uh, this morning it was announced that my airline is going to merge with another airline. And uh, I'm unhappy about it. Um, I know through the work I've done to stay sober and my recovery life, I know that all the anger and resentment and betrayal and, and, and all that stuff is based solely on fear and selfishness. I know this. Uh, fear of losing what I have, fear of losing what I think I have, fear of not getting what I should have, all these things. Um, I, I try to live my life with gratitude, enough gratitude to supersede fear and selfishness, but it doesn't always work. Um, so why am I upset? Um, well, first, it's just a shock. It was a huge shock, and I think both Flood attendants on both in both airlines were both shocked. No one had any warning about this. There has been rumor off and on for years that these two airlines were going to merge. Why wouldn't they? They have a very similar business model. Similar, we have uh, similar aircraft. We all supply Airbus aircraft. Um, so there's all all sorts of reasons. Like we all sort of thought it was going to happen, but I, the airline kept saying no, no, no. It's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. So will you believe them, right? Um, yeah, well, a couple years ago, this just came to my mind. If you work for my airline, I'd say it was three years ago, maybe a little bit more. They were trying to introduce a little bit of, what what color do they call it? A cerulean, blue, green, teal, turquoise. They were trying to introduce a little of that with our color story, black and yellow. They were trying to introduce, they were going to allow us to wear bracelets and socks and ties and things like that in that color to introduce it to our color story and looking back I'm like this was probably has this has probably been in the in the makings for years and years now that I think about it but why am I fearful why am I feeling selfish <laughs> because I don't know what's going to happen next now as a flight attendant that's a lifestyle that you have to live you have to embrace the chaos. You never know where you're going to sleep that night. You don't know if you're going to make it home there on the right day because so many things can change. But I have been based in Las Vegas for five years. I bought my house here in Las Vegas last year. I don't know what's going to happen in terms of bases. Now, to my, in my I'm very, very lucky that Las Vegas seems to be the only base that we have in common. All of our other bases seem to be separate from different airlines, but both of us have a base in Vegas. So I'm hoping that my seniority will allow me, if we have to make a decision to where to be based, I'm hoping that my seniority and the fact that I already live here will keep me in Las Vegas. So if this merger happens, because there's a slight chance it won't, if the Justice Department or whomever it is decides that we shouldn't merge, but if it goes through... What's going to happen with everyone being based around the country? Are they going to keep the two airlines separate for a number of years? Or are they going to blend them together? And if so, how are bases going to be, you know, chosen? I'm, I'm, I think the Continental and United merger happened and it dragged for so many years. And there were so many bad feelings between the two camps because there were still two camps. Uh, for many, many years. I don't know if that's even still been like, is that, is that water under the bridge now? Are they finally over the merger? But people were very upset for years, decades, right? So I don't know what's going to happen. I really don't know. But my, my first thought was like, oh my gosh, what's my seniority going to look like? You know, I've been here five years in the company. I'm 1954 out of like 4,500 flight attendants. In five years, I'm above the 50% mark. Uh, so, I mean, I'm very happy with my seniority. 
in base, I'm like 364 or something like that out of almost 700 flight attendants. So my seniority is pretty good with my airline. I just don't know what's going to happen to my seniority when this all happens, you know. And again, again, I have to keep trying to look for the silver lining. The other airline that we're merging with, who's going to have like over 51% of shares. So they're going to be in charge, which adds to my sense of selfishness and fear. Because like, you know, I want my team to win. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. So I don't know uh, what their seniority is like. Like how many people in their, in their company have been here longer than five years? They have fewer flight attendants. They've got, I don't know, 20, 2,500, maybe 2,900 flight attendants. We have 4,500. So I'm hoping that those two things, my length of service and the number of flight attendants we both have, I'm hoping my seniority stays where it is or increases. That would be nice. But I'm anxious about what my seniority is going to look like. I think any flight attendant in a merger situation, it's one of their first thoughts. Like, oh my goodness, what's my seniority going to look like? Um, I know that I won't be on reserve. I know that. Thank goodness. Um, there's just so many things I'm anxious about. I'm, I'm fearful. I kind of want to cry a little bit over this. I'm fearful of losing the company culture that I have come to love. As I, I tell you guys all the time, I love my job. I love my company. When I see a bright yellow plane, because we all know who I work for, when a bright yellow plane against this turquoise desert sky, when I see that, it thrills me. I Joy erupts in my chest. I think it's the best livery. I just think it's the best. And the, cult, the culture that, that we have created, especially over the past five years, because we had a pretty rough start for, you know, five or six years ago, things weren't as easy as they are now. Um, I, I love who I work for. I love who I work with. My coworkers are amazing. Not that the other airline, they aren't wonderful too. I'm actually friends, I think really good friends with two flood attendants with that airline. Um, I'm just sad. Because I feel like I'm like becoming a blended family unwilling, you know, unwillingly. Um, like this other airline's a stepfather I don't want. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, so this, like so my fear and my anxiety over change. Change that I have no power over, I have no control over, that I have no say in involved. That should make it less stressful and less fearful, but it doesn't really seem to help me much. I have no control over the change that's going to happen. Um, so I don't know what to expect. It's going to take a while for this to happen. It was just announced. So the next step is, I guess, to see if the government, the federal government, will allow this merger to happen in the first place. Uh, and then we'll see what happens. But I don't know what bases are going to remain open. Um, what my senior art is going to look like, who will be flying with, what's my uniform going to look like? What's the name of the company going to be? What is our, our, what are our airplanes going to look like? And like I said, it shouldn't matter what the plane looks like, but I have such pride. This is the crux of a lot of the issues is my pride. I have a sense of pride around who I work for and who I work with. And that sense of pride feels threatened. Is this making any sense at all? I'm sorry. I'm just like freeform as I usually am anyway. My sense of pride here is what's at stake really. Um, so I can, I'm trying to think of some silver linings. That's something I do try to do to kind of outweigh the fear and anxiety and stress. And so a silver lining, I so badly want to cry right now. Silver lining, number one, um, I've been here five years. My seniority is definitely going to be safe. I just don't know if it's going to go up or down, you know. Um, so, but I'll still be a line holder. There's that. Um, 
a silver lining that Las Vegas is the only base that both airlines have in common. So one would hope that I'd be able to stay in my base in the event that we are reassigned. Um, I have to go look at my con and read my contract about about base reassignment and stuff like that. I don't know if there's anything in there about mergers. For some reason, I think there is. Um, silver lining is that the other airline that I that will be I'll be related to um, flies to a lot of destinations that we don't fly to currently, like Bozeman, Montana. I've never in my life ever thought of going to Bozeman, Montana, but one of the flight attendants, Fierceness, do you know who Fierceness is? I used to watch her all the time. She flew to Bozeman and she loved it, you know, and she's very extra. She's pretty fancy. So she liked Bozeman. What's, what, you know, that'll be nice. So they fly to some destinations that we currently don't fly. A silver lining. <sighs> business model. It's the same business model. You know, it's a low-cost carrier. We charge for everything, so there won't be any big surprises there. So it's not like I'm going to have to get used to making meals in the back of the aircraft, you know. All right. I feel better having said these silver linings. Okay, I still want to cry. Silver lining. We all fly an all-Airbus fleet. <clears throat> so we fly all Airbus my airline, we fly 319s, 320s, 321s. To my knowledge, the other airline only flies A320s and 321s. I don't think they have any 19s. Um, but uh, we have pretty much all space flex aircraft except for those 319s. Um, I think the other airline has some classics left over for some reason. Uh, I am a little anxious having to memorize air aircraft or some different um airport codes that we don't use now uh and i'm a little anxious about having to learn uh their emergency emergency equipment and where it is and any you know differences what do they call it e uh e equipment difference i don't know what difference training different difference training whatever it is um so silver lining we're going to be uh, flying the same type of aircraft so there's that um Silver lining, my friend um, Lacey and another friend who I don't want to mention only because I, <laughs> um, you know her, uh, she, they, they both work for this other airline. So um, if I have any questions or any anxieties or fears, I know that I can go right to them and talk to them. My friend Lacey has been there for four years, so she would have a really good understanding of, of what, um, how I would compare her experience to my experience in terms of seniority and things like that. So that's a silver lining. I'm not going in blindsided. Uh, another silver lining. There's a lot of them. I'm feeling better. Um, their contract is online. So I've already opened it up on my phone. I'm going to have to open up my laptop because reading a contract on my phone with these eyes is not really easy. So, uh, I'm going to read their contract so I can get a, a feel for it. Uh, something I, I'm anxious about PBS preferential bidding system. I think they use PBS and, um, a lot of airlines do. Excuse me. I'm anxious about it. I don't want to learn it, but I'm going to have to. And um, yeah, so those are some of the silver linings I can think of. So all is not bad. There's no all doom and gloom. I just, I, I love who I work for. I love the name of my airline. I love the color of our planes. I love the people I work with. I'm familiar with them. I just, I just hate change. My whole life has been so chaotic. My whole life has been a struggle against chaos and my natural attraction to chaos and my wanting to become chaos. My whole life has been a struggle against that. And the past five years, I've really found consistency while that might breed complacency sometimes, it's just been a very peaceful life, especially the past year. And to have 
all of that potentially uprooted feels um, scary. It feels, it feels scary. So has that made any sense at all? So I came out to my, the one place that makes me feel peaceful and comfortable, Red Rock. So this is where I am right now. You can see that. And you can see the wind, windshield is fogged up with my breath. I've been talking for so long. So I'm going to just go take a walk around. Um, the sun should be setting in the next couple hours. It's very pretty out here at this time. So I'll film a couple bits and pieces out there so you can sort of see, you know, what's happening this time in Red Rock. Um, if you're so disposed, if you have been through a merger with another airline, what was your experience like? The good. <laughs> Give me some silver linings here. Uh, you know, are there silver linings I'm missing? You know, is there anything I, I should be, be thankful for that I haven't already listed? So drop a comment below. Um, and, um, as always, I'll say thank you. I do, I, when I finish talking to you, I think I'm going to cry a little bit. Um, yeah, as always, thank you for being here with me because when I can even just talk through this, it's like, it's like therapy <laughs> talking to you folks, talking through this and having a witness as to what's happening in my life has always made things better. So thank you for being a part of my life and witnessing what's happening and even when I'm not feeling my best or a hundred percent. So thank you. I'm going to get some air. Although I think I'm going to find a different spot. There's so many people over here. There's so much traffic. Um, I just want like isolation <laughs> right now. So I will talk to you guys later. All right. Thank you. Fly safe as always. Bye. <sighs> I know you've seen this all before, but I figured I'd film a little bit of my drive. This is the edge of Red Rock on my right hand side. Um, this is the this section I think is called a calico something or other. It's very pretty. It's even prettier in another 45 minutes an hour when the sun drops a little bit. Just being out here makes me feel better. Isn't this pretty? Look at that. So beautiful. <sighs> Chaos cannot exist here. Unless I bring it, which I have a history. But uh, so I'm walking through here. This uh, path right behind me converged into kind of a bottleneck. And I see someone coming towards me. So I step out of the way to allow them to pass by. And there's this beautiful, beautiful, beautiful girl, blonde, maybe in her early 20s. Beautiful figure, a little teeny tiny tank top, little tiny teeny tiny shorts, uh, and a little ponytail, and uh, she's all by herself. I'm like, I mean, maybe you have a weapon on you. I would carry one if I were her, but I mean, look, look there is nobody here. If someone were to come, oh, what was that? Some sort of bird. Um, I don't think it would be safe to travel out here by herself. I would never, as it is, I'm by myself. Oh, it's a very pretty, it's a blue jay of some sort. Can you see it? No, there it goes. Yeah, I think it's a blue jay. But this is not a place I would go hiking around dressed like that without a weapon. I'm not a fan of guns, but I'd have something on me. But, oh, it's beautiful. I don't think it's a blue jay, but it's blue. I have to do some little Googling to find out what desert birds are blue. It's beautiful. I've gone on for quite a while. I think I'm going to head back to the car in a minute, but this area looks so cool. Thank God for these little boots of mine. Oh, so pretty. 
I'm sorry the camera's so shaky. Look at these two trees. This one on the right's probably, I don't even know, four feet tall? It's not very big. But the one next to it here is dead. It's just skeletal. It's very sculptural. It's very cool. But then the one on the right is thriving. I wonder what the difference is between that one like foot of distance between the two trees. That this one would die and that one would thrive. Interesting. And there's like a succulent plant growing right next to it. So I wonder what happened. They're both very old. I'm sorry. You don't want to be watching me, you know, go on about trees. <laughs> but look how pretty. So pretty. <laughs> you guys never know what you're going to get in my channel, do you? I'm going on and on and on about how upset I am, how fearful I am. And then here I am walking around the desert. <laughs> you guys just never know what you're going to get with me. But uh, I think I'm going to go up here, see what's on the other side, then maybe go back to the car. Um, further down where I just was, the, the sand is wet underneath the very surface. So I'm not quite sure where that moisture is coming from. It has not rained here in quite a while. But this is called a tank. So maybe there's some sort of spring or something. Oh my goodness. All right. I'm going to go a few more feet that way and then I'll turn around. I know I keep saying that. Hey, look, this sand is wet. That's not just like damp, that's wet sand. It looks like the water just ran away from it. And you can kind of see patterns of rainwater having moved through, but it hasn't rained here. I don't know, I don't know the last time it rained here. Now that is way too much for me to handle right now. So I'm turning back. Sometimes I'm an idiot. I was just walking through here thinking, my goodness, this is like the finest beach sand. You'd find this on Panama City Beach. It's so smooth. I'm thinking, oh God, where did the sand come from? And then I'm like, duh. <laughs> They're sandstone mountains and cliffs. So this was all sand originally that formed into sandstone which is just basically compressed sand and that with weathering and erosion and blah 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 it's back to being sand again ashes to ashes sand to sand i guess look how pretty oh, oh my god i'm so glad it came out here i feel so much better look at that so pretty I know I've pointed this out before, but as much as this looks like holly, it's not. It's an oak tree that has evolved to live in the desert. See, that's an acorn cap. And there's a teeny tiny little oak leaves that look like holly. I think it's the coolest thing. Well, the sun is setting over the mountains there. I wish you could see the different striations of color in the rocks. I don't know. But uh, it's beautiful, and if you look way over there, it looks a little more smoggy than it, it really does in person, but that is Las Vegas right there. You can see how clear the air is and how close Vegas is to Red Rock. <laughs> I was just at this lookout spot, and... Uh, there's a couple, I think they're Canadian. They were so nice. Um, they're trying to get a picture of themselves. Ugh, but, uh, you know, sometimes a selfie angle works and sometimes it doesn't. I offered to take a picture of them and uh, they said, yeah, please. And I took a picture and they just look so sweet together. And she put her, put her hand up on his chest like this. And I was like, oh, I wish I had a boyfriend, but instead I have cats. <laughs> sometimes, Sometimes I am missing out, but whatever.